Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm just going over how to find the null space of a matrix. So basically, first off, the notation for the null space of a matrix is the capital letter N followed by the name of the matrix in brackets. So if our matrix is named A, we write a capital N with A in brackets. And the null space of a matrix is the set of vectors that form the homogeneous solution that can be written like uh, in this case where we have a, we set it up as an augmented matrix and set the whole right hand side to zeros. So the null space also happens to form a valid subspace, that's a cool property of them. Um, but basically what we want to do is if we want to solve or if we want to find the null space of matrix A, we have to set it up as a homogeneous system. And this also represents the equation where we have A times this vector x is equal to the zero vector or a uh, expand it out, it's the same as this where we have a here and x here and then again the zero vector just like that. All right, so we can solve this augmented matrix by just finding the reduced row echelon form of it. So the first thing that we want to do is we should apply our elementary row operations and I think what we want to do is we want to do um, row 3 minus row 2 so let's let's first write in row one. We're not going to be changing row one in here. So we have one, three, two, and a zero. Um, row three minus row one. So we're going to get one minus one is zero. One minus one is zero. Zero minus zero is zero. Zero minus zero is zero. And then here for row two, we can also just do it in this step. I think we want to eliminate this to be a zero. So let's do row two plus row 1. So we have 1 plus negative 1 is 0, 1 plus 3 is 4, 0 plus 2 is 2, and 0 plus 0 is 0. All right. Uh, in the next step, let's multiply row 1 by negative 1 to switch this to a positive 1, and then we will divide row 2 by 4 because we want this leading entry to be a 1 as well. So we have row 2 divided by 4, and when we fill this out, we get this becomes 1, this becomes negative 3, negative 2, and a 0 there. And then here we have 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 2 divided by 4 is 0 0.5, 0 divided by 4 is 0, and we didn't do anything to this last row of zeros. All right, there's one more step that we can do here is we can get rid of this entry. So we'll just have uh, row 1 plus 3 times row 2. Okay, so we get 1 plus 3 times 0 is 1. Negative 3 plus 3 times 1 is 0. And negative 2 plus 3 times 0 0.5, so that's negative 2 plus 1.5. That is negative 0 0.5. All right, the last one is still zero, and then everything else is unaffected. So we have positive 0 0.5, zero, and then that last row of zeros. All right, so we have it in reduced row echelon form now, and we can rewrite it back as a system of linear equations. So we can write this as x1 minus 0 0.5 times x3 is equal to zero. That's this first line up here. And then the second line is x2 plus 0 0.5 x3 is also equal to 0. So what I like to do at this point is write what each variable is basically. So we have x1 is equal to, if we bring this over to the other side, x1 is equal to 0 0.5 x3 and x2 is equal to, if we bring this over, it will be negative 0 0.5 x3. And then x3 is just that independent variable. It's just equal to x3. It's just chilling by itself. So now that we have all this, we can look up here that then notice that the x vector was equal to have these components x1, x2, and x3. And we have the values here for them. So we can rewrite this in vector form um, where we have 0 0.5 x3, negative 0 0.5, x3, and just x3. And because x3 can just really be anything, um, just to simplify things, we can actually just get rid of the subscript now. So if we just erase that, basically we're getting this vector that has this form 
of 0.5x, negative 0.5x and x, where x can be absolutely anything. Um, and again, if that's the case, then also what we can do is we can clean it up a little bit um, and just write this as, because x can be anything, we'll just multiply everything by two um, to get this to be one, negative one, and two. So these two vectors have the same form. This one is just cleaner to look at. Um, and really, we could, we could write any letter in here. It doesn't have to be x. We could have written a or something um, just to show you that if we pick a number here, this one has to, the second element has to be the negative of that, and the third element has to be twice the, the first element. Um, so basically, this vector here is the null space of A. This is the set of all vectors with this form that are the solution to this homogeneous problem. So we can come up here and write this. This is equal to x, negative x, and 2x. And then also, if you're curious, uh, basically, like I said, this is a valid subspace. And the basis of this subspace, or the basis of the null space, uh, can just be written, uh, if you just take out the x, basically, it's just 1, negative 1, and 2. So all scaled up and scaled down versions of this basis form the null space, which is a subspace.